right, so we're going to talk about our next type of collision, which is an elastic collision. Whenever we discuss an elastic collision, of course, momentum is conserved, because why else would we be talking about it? But also, in this case, kinetic energy is conserved. So whenever objects collide during an elastic collision, the objects do not compress during the collision. So there's no work done, and therefore no change in kinetic energy. Now, in real life, this is not realistic except on the subatomic level. So we're talking about particles colliding with each other. In physics courses, we tend to give a more macroscopic view of this by using things like polar billiard balls. However, even though those are fairly hard objects and when they collide, we don't expect much compression, in reality, there is still a little bit of kinetic energy loss. But because we want to talk about physical objects, you can see we typically talk about those rather than subatomic particles, uh, especially since this is not a particle physics class. All right, so because both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved, we have some extra relationships. So we can use the conservation of momentum. We can also use the conservation of kinetic energy. So the initial kinetic energy in the system has to equal the final kinetic energy of the system. And that leads to a third equation that relates the initial velocities to the final velocities. And there's a derivation of this in your textbook if you're curious about it. I do want to reiterate, though, that this is solely for elastic collisions. For elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved, which gives us the second and third equation down here. In fact, let me give them numbers. So I call this 1, 2, and 3. So equation 2 and 3 apply only to elastic collisions. Equation 1 can be used in any type of collision. So that means you must read your problem carefully in order to know which equations to apply. Because if you attempt to apply equation 3 or equation 2 and it's an inelastic collision, you're not going to solve the problem correctly. So it's very important to read and use your vocabulary words when solving these problems. And I encourage you guys, as you're solving problems with elastic collisions, to mostly focus on equation 1 and equation 3. Only use equation 2 if you're specifically asked about kinetic energy because the velocities are squared, um, we're going to have to do some algebraic substitution in this section. And when you sub equation into a square, you end up having the foilage, and that's a lot of algebra. So try to avoid doing a lot of algebra by using equation 1 and 3.